Welcome to Street Talk and Other Stuff. I am not Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, <laughs> thank God. Uh, so I am here because I've been coerced to host my dad's show. He didn't really feel like he was um, getting enough attention by just being the host. Um, and he felt like his fans really deserved to know more about him and hear more from him. So, um, so it's time for him to be the special guest. Uh, so I'm Marie Scanlon, and this is the other stuff that Mikey never gets to. Uh, and to start, I have some special stories to go with our special guest. Uh, so I got pulled over the other day, and uh, the officer asked me to get out of the car, and he looked me over, and he said, ma'am, your eyes are really bloodshot. Have you been drinking? And I was so offended. I looked him over, and I said, officer, your eyes are glazed. Have you been eating donuts? <laughs> yeah, he had been. So recently, or actually not recently, this was a while ago when uh, Officer Mikey was a street cop. He and the um, CIA and FBI were arguing over who was the best at apprehending criminals. Uh, so the mayor decided to put it to a test. He uh, released a rabbit into the Wenatchee Natural Forest, a National Forest, and they all had to try and catch it. So uh, the CIA went in. They placed animal informants throughout the forest. They questioned all plant and mineral witnesses. And after three months of an, an extensive investigation, they concluded that rabbits don't exist. So the FBI went in. And after two weeks with no leads, uh, they burnt the forest, killed everything in it, including the rabbit, and made no apologies. That rabbit had it coming. So then Officer Mikey goes in, and he comes out about two hours later with a badly beaten bear, and that bear was yelling, okay, okay, I'm a, I'm a rabbit, I'm a rabbit. <laughs> That's a true story, true story. So how many cops does it take to throw a man down the stairs? None, he fell. <laughs> and how many cops does it take to change a light bulb? Three, one to do it, one to direct traffic, and one for backup. Uh, and then how many LA cops does it take to change a light bulb? Six. One to do it and five to smash the old bulb to splinters. Ouch. That one hurt. Uh, okay, so enough of these shenanigans. I have a great show for you today. We'll be right back with our special guest. equipment breaks. This Lennox dealer can help. Keep your home comfort system running smoothly with regular checkups from Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Call Patriot today. Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling will give your home a hug. Get up to $1,700 in rebates or special financing. Tacos Chava has something new. Customers at Tacos Chava say it's the best Mexican food around. Nachos, enchiladas, tortas, ensaladas, and introducing camarones in many styles. You'll love the fresh salsa bar with so much selection. Are you ready for Tacos Chava? Find them at two great locations, the Wenatchee Valley Mall and any at Tacos Chava. Tan delicioso. Vamanos Junk Haulers are pleased to announce they've added moving services to their list of ways to make your life easier. Vamanos Moving Service. No move is too big or small. In fact, Vamanos does it all. Vamanos employees are experienced at moving your home, office, business, and storage. They'll carefully load and unload your belongings. And for the do-it-yourselfers, Vamanos also rents trucks and cargo trailers. Call Vamanos Junk Haulers and Moving Service today to schedule your free estimate. I wish we had something cool for the kids to do this summer. I feel like we've just done it all. Have you heard about the 100 days of summer at the Rack? The kids can take a dive with swim team, challenge themselves with karate and junior workouts. It's games galore playing tennis and pickleball. No need to choose. They can try it all with the Rack Summer Multi-Sport Camps. There's fun for you too. Get fit with group fitness or work on that tan by the pool. The Rack has something for the whole family. Find all the details at WRAC.org and do your 100 Days of Summer at The Rack, where we play every day. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome. 
Uh, Mike, I'm so glad you decided to be a guest today. Oh, thank you, Marie. <laughs> thank you for having me. I just think the public hasn't heard enough from you. Oh. And uh, <laughs> it's really great that you came up with this idea where you get to just talk about yourself more. You ask me. No. Okay. No. All right, let's not get into that. All right, we're not going to get into that. Okay, so uh, my first question for you is, um, in a recent show that I watched just yesterday, um, <laughs> you, uh, you said that you were really, really shy as a kid. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, can you explain that, what changed? Because you're now the polar opposite of oh, shy. Oh, I worked on it. I did. I, I mean, there was, I, mean, I didn't, exp this is a serious question. I, I really wanted to get over this inferiority complex I had. So when I went to college, mm -hmm. um, I walked, I was going to do an experiment. I was going to walk around the campus smiling at people. I was going to force myself because I think I've got a goofy smile. I mean, look, my eyes crinkle up. They mm -hmm. disappear. <laughs> you know what the hardest part was? What? Was getting other people even to look at me so I could smile at them. And then I realized everyone else was as friggin' insecure as I was. <laughs> so that was kind of the start. Yeah. And then I just worked on it. You know, I just put myself into positions where... I was uncomfortable, um, you know, in social situations and made myself do things. And, you know, I screwed up and did stupid stuff <laughs> probably more often than not. But, no, it, it you know, it, I, I don't know. Did it work? <laughs> I think so. I think you're not very shy now. No. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. And okay. that is probably your philosophy on life. You just work hard for something. and In, in a way, yeah. yeah. You know, if you, you have to recognize where you're weak. Well, you look at what you're afraid of, and sometimes that's exactly where you need to go. Move forward. Well, this is getting it. a heck of a lot deeper than I thought it was going to. Well, who did you think you were talking to? <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> All right, so you recently got a new tattoo, and we'll talk more about your morality later. Um, <laughs> but can you tell us uh, why you got it and what it means to you? Oh, my tattoo? Yeah, maybe should show I, us. Should I yeah. my tattoo? Your mother's going to kill I you. I don't okay? care. This is my there show, there not is. hers. See? It says Renaissance Man, and it's got God and Adam's fingers from Michelangelo's <laughs> painting. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's self-aggrandizing. I realize that. <laughs> but it's, it was, it's part of my theory of getting over my inferior art complex. <clears throat> Having a self-aggrandizing attitude is just as self-absorbed as having an inferiority complex, hmm. but it's a heck of a lot more fun. Yeah. So, but you know, I consider myself to be a Renaissance man. You know, I cook. I, I'm an amateur actor, or I try. Mm -hmm. You know, I do the dishes, I do the laundry. <laughs> so, and I think people don't uh, have an idea of just like how renaissance you are. So I grew up hearing stories about how many different jobs you've had. So oh man, oh gosh. What was maybe the worst job you've oh, ever had? Oh, being a vacuum salesman. Being a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. That was absolutely the worst job I ever had. Yeah? Yeah, well you have to go out of town, knock on people's door. You're doing cold calling is mm -hmm. what it is. And saying, hi, you know, how would you like to see hi? I just don't even, oh, I'm traumatized even thinking about it. One of the best jobs I had, though, was working at a slaughterhouse. Ah, Cleaning yeah. up in a slaughterhouse, and that was, I liked that. That sounds disgusting. Cause, well, it was, <laughs> but it was interesting. You know what's funny, though? <coughs> I thought working in a slaughterhouse would make me not want to eat meat, because I used to work in a roast beef sandwich place, and I couldn't stand the thought of roast beef after that. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, working around raw meat, you start craving it after a while. I mean, you wow. walk past those hanging sides of beef and walk through the smokehouse, and oh, yeah, meat, meat, <laughs> Gross. meat, it's for dinner. <laughs> oh, man. No. Okay, so uh, when I first met you, you were <laughs> attending. Um, we were in the delivery room at Central Washington Hospitals where she first met me. Anyway, so, so you were attending a pretty big, popular, pretty charismatic church. Mm -hmm. um, and it's where you and your wife got married. Um, and then several years later when we reconnected, um, you told me you were never going to grace the doors of a church oh, yeah, again. Oh, I did. No, for sure. So, um, but now you do attend church. Yeah. Um, so what changed? Can you, did you have somebody that was like, <sighs> super influential in that yeah very much so again boy you're asking serious <laughs> stuff here okay your I've, fans want to know who you are earlier in my police career in the first year i was there one of the police chaplains came out to ride with me and it was tim wilbur okay and he got in my car and they put him with me because he's the rookie you know mm -hmm. i mean nobody wants to ride <laughs> ride with the police chaplain <laughs> so we were talking and i just kind of i told him i said i will never grace the door of a church I, you know, I consider myself a Christian, but I will never grace the door of a church again, mm -hmm. you know. But he was so decent about it and nice, you know. So later on, when I had a spiritual crisis in my life, many years later, he was exactly the person who I thought I needed to go talk to, and I did. 
And he's, you know, I mean, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but Tim Wilber is one of the finest human beings I have ever met. And I've got a lot of respect for him. So that's awesome. why me too. I'm very glad he allows me to attend his church. <laughs> I think there's been numerous times he's wanted to say, Mike, uh, wanna... <laughs> <laughs> time to move on. <laughs> but he hasn't yet. So, okay. so, so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody maybe a little <clears throat> bit more closer to you. Has there been anybody else that like really, really like, influenced you and led you in your path and what as far as my christianity yeah. and that type of stuff I, are you looking for somebody specific here yeah if I'm missing yeah like somebody sitting right here oh, you are, like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um talk about how great i am right why don't you tell me well you are very <laughs> i mean i've always thought you were a phenomenal human being thank you, know? you. i Really appreciate that. You know what really is great about you, though, is this, my daughter is loved very much by my relatives, my sisters and brothers, all of whom are liberal. They just love her, and they should. But you know what really pisses them off is that I raised her. <laughs> <laughs> so. It does. It's true. It really bugs the hell out of them that you're my daughter. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. You can think that. Um, but. Talking about parenting, you do have uh, really, really great kids. Um, so what do, you, what do you attribute to that? Do you think it's just like their, their excellent character, courage to survive your parenting, or was it, or was it their mom? Uh, a lot of it had to do with your mom, certainly. <laughs> but I think you forgave me a lot of stuff. I mean, really. I mean, there was a lot of stupid things I did as a father. Um, I was not the most, I was, wasn't as generous as I should be, but I did take care of that once. Um, <laughs> once? <laughs> I did, I did. We were gonna take a trip down to Mexico, the whole family. It was before Marie got married, so it was, it was the four of us. And I went to Marie and Tony both, and I had $500 in each hand. And I said, look, I know that I've screwed up as a father. I know that there were times I could have been a better dad and more generous, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to give you each $500 to take on this vacation and spend any way you want. And that erased want. all debts. That is it. That was the deal. All debts. If you took it, you erased everything. Everything was clear after $500. Well, did you take the money? <laughs> did you take the money? I did, but <laughs> there's interest. So, so we, it no, doesn't erase the debts since then. No, no, no. Debts are cleared. All is past is forgiven. Oh, Every error whatever. I ever made as a father is forgotten and taken away. <laughs> because and of five hundred dollars. It, it went pretty cheap, actually. You know, you sold yourself. You know, pretty cheap for that. So. You're lucky you're on. We're on live <laughs> television right now. Um. So. Uh, how about your, uh, kind of going back to your spiritual journey maybe, how about uh, your view on things? You, like tattoos for instance. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I remember a specific moment when you told me that the Bible prohibits them and therefore you will the never, says, don't, get a get, don't interrupt me. Oh. This is my show. That you're never going to get one and uh, never say never, right? You, how is that all or nothing thinking working for you in your life? Uh, I decided I was going to give more grace to more people, so I would have decided to give more to myself. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> no, and again, specifically, the Old Testament says don't put tattoos on because people used them as a part of, you know, idol and false god worship back then. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it, it doesn't mean the same. It's like, okay, you do yoga. Some people are, oh, not going to do yoga because that has to do with an Eastern religion. Like, that's nonsense. I mean, if you're doing it because it's... You're doing it for exercise and for physical reasons. It has nothing to do with any kind of Eastern religion stuff. <laughs> and my tattoos in no way are, have anything to do with, you know, worship of false gods or that kind of thing, you know. So, but I also realized um, I used to have a blog that no one ever read. <laughs> it was called, you know, Another Way of Looking at Things. And one of my things was Moses wasn't talking to you. And I talk about some specific things in the Old Testament that we would never apply today. So I think it's very interesting that evangelical Christians pick and choose what they want to apply to people's lives now, but then negate other things. I mean, one of them for being, you know, I mean, Jesus spoke specifically about divorce mm -hmm. on many occasions, okay, but nobody bats their eye when Christian gets divorced now, when a Christian gets divorced now. Okay, fine, and I think that's the way it should be. Grace and mercy, but why aren't you applying that grace and mercy to other people who you just pick and choose shouldn't be allowed that level of, uh, you know, forgiveness. And I th think it's hypocritical, so I got a tattoo. <laughs> Does that answer your question? 
Yes. So, okay. Good. Thank you. You're um, how much time do we have? Um, well, we're not even up to the mid-break yet. Oh, you know? okay. We haven't even started getting. You're just getting into serious <laughs> stuff here. Okay. Sorry. You're, really, you're putting me on the spot. You didn't give me any rules. So you said you're fair game. That, so that, that is true. Um, that is true. All right. So, uh, anything else you want to say about your great kids? My <laughs> I do. You know. <sighs> I do have great kids, and it really bugs me sometimes because I did raise them to think for themselves. I did raise them to express. I mean, they never had to necessarily agree with me. I mean, my attitude was, and you'll agree with this, I would go to you and Tony and said, okay, look, these are my values based on this. How's how I feel about things? Whether you accept and apply these or not is up to you, okay? Um, I was never one of these, do as I say, just listen to me. Hmm. You know, I realized that you know, I mean, the goal of parenting is to have a situation of love and trust with your kids so that they will accept your values on things and they will listen to you because there's no way kids can see things from their parents' perspective. And parents frequently want kids to see things. I mean, understand, I've got the experience. You need to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Well, the kid's going, I, you know, I can't relate to what you're saying. Now, unless a child loves and trusts their parents, why would they listen to them? Mm -hmm. Why would they accept their values? And there were some things, you know, you accepted and Tony did, some things that you didn't. But I also, I, you know, your mom and I knew you were going to form your own lives. One of the things, <laughs> one of the things I told that Marie really got pissed at, I said, you guys are temporary, mom's permanent. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice, dad. I said, no, it's true. You guys are going to move out. You're going to form your own families. You're going to be more separated from us, but your mom is going to be the one that I, I get to spend the rest of my <laughs> life with. So, but a true story, right? Mm -hmm. So. So tell me a lot about my own marriage. So, so. Uh, no, she had a great marriage. Um, okay, now look, we got to take a break. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, do you want me to handle this part? Do you want to do this? Sure. Okay, street talking other stuff. I'm the <laughs> guest today. This is my daughter Marie Magnati Scanlon. She hates it when I call her that. But that's her name. <laughs> it's not my name. But uh, I, I guess we're going to be back with more. So you stick around. We'll be right back. So. If you're stuck trying to find the perfect beer for you, look no further than Badger Mountain Brewing. We specialize in creating tantalizing craft beers that will soothe any picky taste buds and will satisfy your cravings. Check out everything from our amazing honey blonde that will appease even the most finicky taster or a delicious frothy stout for dark beer lovers. Experience them all at Badger Mountain Brewing. Hello, Wenatchee Valley. Christian Shanlin here with Bay Equity Home Loans. Let us make your dream of home ownership a reality. We're here to guide you through the loan process every step of the way. Check out our convenient online application. Bay Equity Home Loans in Wenatchee, your home for loans. Stop on by or give us a call today. Just as we went on the air, Steve, NCW Life is live now on Facebook. Hey, how is about that? We're live, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dan Koontz, your host for the next hour. Every weekday, starting at 7 o'clock. Get ready for a bunch of news that's coming your way. Here's what's happening around North Central Washington. We'll have a rundown of all your local, regional, and statewide news. You can also find more on our website at ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. That's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on NCW Life News. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. All right, welcome back. We're here with my special guest, Mike <laughs> Mad, Do Mad Dog, Mad Dog Magnati. Um, that's a self-imposed nickname. Well, so. kind of, kind of. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of self-imposed. <laughs> how did you, how did you decide on that? All right, well, <laughs> when I was a detective for the Wenatchee Police Department, I was a sex crimes detective and a child abuse, basically. And this was a job I had always wanted. I'd worked for it, I'd studied. Um, I mean, I'd, 
educated myself a lot about um, you know child sexual abuse, so it was a, it was a major issue for me. And I became very tenacious. I would get to work at six in the morning, which really pissed my sergeant off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I would go through the police reports and I would assign the sex crime cases to myself because I didn't want anybody else getting them. You know. Mm -hmm. And I became very tenacious. I mean, there were times by the time the, sar the, the chief and the captains got in for the morning meeting at 8 o'clock, I had gone out, picked up a suspect, got a statement and a confession, and had him booked at a jail already, literally. So I, the wow. nickname was Bulldog, mm. okay? I didn't like Bulldog so much. I like Mad Dog better, <laughs> okay? So I just started pretending when they called me Bulldog, or I used it, it was Mad Dog, <laughs> and a miracle occurred. <laughs> You gave yourself a nickname. Yeah, well, it's just, I just I kind of transliterated it a little bit, yeah. you know. I, I took I took the spirit of it and applied what if they had thought about Mad Dog, that's what they would have said. That's back to that <laughs> self-aggrandizing, right? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty self-aggrandizing. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about. And your that's the truth. That is that that is. The I real believe truth. you. My nickname at the police academy is Magnum. Oh. Well, that was you know. Okay. I didn't like that so much. Yeah. Also, I, I gave you the spelling for Mad Dog because you, you couldn't get M-A-D-O-G as a license plate. Yeah, somebody else had it. So you gave yeah. me the, yeah. So I said, why not use two Ds? Right. So, right. yeah. So. Go back to when I was super influential in your <laughs> life. I also oh. named your business. Yes, you did. You yeah. did. You know, New Life Counseling. I just, New I don't think I get enough credit for all this stuff. She does. I got $500. That's what I got. <laughs> I no, deserve you get to tell people you're my daughter. I need like daughter, a finder's okay? fee or something. Who else gets to say, I'm Mike McDonough's daughter? Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> Nobody, right. unfortunately. Um, okay, so back to your, your kids. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> um, you, you butt heads pretty regularly on oh, Facebook gosh. with, with oh. my brother, uh, with your son. Let's just put that out there. It's, it's out there. Um, so now when you were deciding and thinking about what to post on Facebook is what's going through your head is there anything uh, anything yes, going through your head yes and I okay <laughs> in all honesty I try to put stuff that I am thinking about or applying to myself so others can think about it and comment on it mm. literally I am not okay when I first started posting on Facebook my intent was not to stir the pot or cause problems or arguments it really wasn't interesting hey here's an issue okay that mm -hmm. I'm applying to myself and I never say anything like you guys do this you guys do that I say when I'm in a situation this is what I do this is what I think I think that we should you know I think that I should re rethink about this but that's the idea to promote mm -hmm. thought and conversation well some people take offense at that and it doesn't matter. I mean, let's face it. If I printed, hey, nice day, the sky is blue, somebody would come back and say, well, the sky isn't really blue. It's just an optical illusion <laughs> due to, you know, atmospheric conditions. I mean, oh, come on. Tell me that isn't true. Tell me that isn't true. People Maybe. would come back and say Maybe. that. Maybe. But. Okay. But is that them or is that your posts oh, that. I, I don't know. I that mean, have what, now, like opened up that door to just well, I think that's allow part of people. You know what, you want, you, can I be br brutally honest here, talk about self-aggrandizing? Yeah. I think some people see me as a threat to how they thought things, so they have to attack me, okay? Hmm. And I don't see myself that way at all. I'm just saying something, hey, I look at stuff, I examine stuff in my own life, there's things I think about that I think it would be helpful to to address, but mm -hmm. then there's other stuff. Like I posted a joke the other day, you know, mm -hmm. the one about the Mariners being unable to mm -hmm. beat anybody, mm -hmm. you know? Oh gosh, you know, I mean, it Tony. It offended some people. It offended Tony, okay? It offended my son, and let's face it, he's the one who would tell me the sky isn't really blue. It's just due to atmospheric conditions and an optical illusion. Well, I'd like to go back to you raised him. Yes, so. I did. I, <laughs> <laughs> I am proud of that. I am. I'm very proud of him. I love Tony. He's a great guy. AP Magnati is who he names himself on on Facebook. If you're, I actually think it's pretty funny <sighs> sometimes when um, I watch these conversations. I try not to enter into the fray because <laughs> I think I am one of the smartest in my family. <laughs> um, but I watch the conversations, uh. and it's interesting to me when people. I can tell that people don't know that he's your son, and they come to your defense so vehemently that. It, it's, it no, I told somebody last night that AP Magnati said, 
he's your son? Mm -hmm. Oh my, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Gosh. I said, no, he's a great kid. Yeah. You know, I love him. I it's funny though, when Tony and I are together, we get along really well. Yeah, you know? I just think that social media like doesn't allow for that. 80% was something like 80 or 90% of our communication is nonverbal. So when yeah. you're trying to communicate something on a social media site, you're not getting most of what's being communicated there. Right, then, no, that's true. And that's, um, you have to be careful. Well, it's like emails too, you know. But I mean, I've gotten emails that are sending emails to people they've been really insulted by and that haven't been my intent yeah. at all. You know? But so many people are basing their opinions and judgments of people on what's being posted or right. what you're posting or what people are commenting and you know really it's not that's not a relationship. I mean that's really true because when I meet people they look at me and go oh, I read your post on Facebook I had no idea you were so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Liar! <laughs> okay we gotta take a break. <laughs> okay. Gotta take a break. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So you handled it. Oh handled sorry. Uh, it's time for a break. I, I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Uh, thank you. We'll be right back with Mike Mad Dog Magnati. <laughs> I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Watch us on Local Tell Channel 12. Watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. equipment breaks. This Lennox dealer can help. Keep your home comfort system running smoothly with regular checkups from Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Call Patriot today. Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling will give your home a hug. Get up to $1,700 in rebates or special financing. seven days a week for lunch and dinner in downtown Wenatchee and now downtown Leavenworth where eating out is eating healthy. All right, welcome back. I'm here with uh, my dad and friend Mike Mad Dog Magnati. Um, so uh, you're pretty well known to be a conservative Republican. Um, no, I'm not a Republican. I'm okay. not a member of either party, but okay. I am more conservative than not. Okay. Uh, and you have quite a conservative following on, on the socials and in life. Well, I, um, you know, I think there's lots of liberals or progressives who follow as well. So For the show. Yeah. Uh, but both your kids are pretty liberal. Yes, that is true. So how do you think that happened, and how do you cope knowing they're more progressive than you are? Well, I think in part how <laughs> you were raised. I mean, you were raised to think for yourself, you know, um, and you're young. Um, I had more what you would call progressive or liberal attitudes when I was younger, too. Um, then I started paying taxes. I'm actually not that young, Dad. But you're younger than me. Okay, but I... Okay, we asked the question. I answered it. I didn't. I'm not. I'm not God here. Okay. No, but that's a little condescending. Like, no, well, it's you're not. young. No, you might. I said when I was younger, I had more liberal attitude. I'm not being condescending. Okay. Well, I've been working and paying taxes for um, a long time. Well, I'm telling you what changed me. Okay. 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 All right. So. All right. And why are you? I don't know. I think you just see the world differently than I do, and that's in part how your mom and I raised you. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so I've got no problem with it. Okay. So how do you cope with those feelings of being less than than Tony and I in our <laughs> in our beliefs and no, value no, system no, and no, I don't feel political? Less than. 
I don't feel less. There's a lot of attitudes I have that are socially eclectic. Let's put it that way. Okay. But hey, we got to stop. It's right. time to go. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> we'll see you next week. And thanks for doing this. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>